We are back, folks, here on the Michigan Insider Sports Talk 1050 WTKA online at WTK.com. Sam Webb, Mr. Ira Weintraub on the other side. And so, you know, the game within the game, you hear that phrase, right? There's a game within the game in every football game. That game in the trenches is the game within the game. It's Oh, a different the world within the game here inside the building to make sure that this thing works as we're about to go live with Jack Miller brought to you by Highland. That is right. And so Jack, former University of Michigan offensive lineman, quarterback, the offensive line. He has some defensive line in his background, too, to give us bring him in every week to give us that breakdown of the game within the game to tell us about what we might be missing on the inside. And Jack Miller joins us now. Jack, how are you this morning? Good, Sam. How you doing? I'm just curious. Do you tell Devin when he comes on for his segments that I might have quarterbacked the offense? Or I'd <laughs> make sure you mention that remark to him as well. I'm curious to see what he has to say. I will definitely do that. I will definitely do that. And Thank you. Tell him that there were two quarterbacks. Thank you. Uh, back in the day. But, you know, Jack, it, I say that to say there are nuances and we sort of broke it out last week. It was what, I mean, people say Michigan ran counter, but it was how they ran counter. So many different variations, right? Yeah. It's the game within the game. They don't see the little details that the offensive line, for instance, is, is performing on a down in down out basis. And that's kind of what I want to dig in with, dig into with you today to really sort of highlight, man, these guys, are playing at an extremely high level when it comes to, you know, the right assignment and then executing assignments on the move and then a yeah. defensive line. Uh, but Sands one drive, they've been playing really well too, Jack. Yeah, no doubt. I mean, I think offensively, um, it looks like Coach Harbaugh's old days, right? Those Stanford days where they'd line up guys in the box, get a lot of movement, not miss assignments and, and take care of business. It's been really impressive to watch. I mean, a lot of, great college football teams that run the ball effectively, they don't line up like this and they don't necessarily run these types of plays, right? If you think of, you know, even an Ohio State or a Clemson over the past few years, what they've done, they spread the box out so the safeties and linebackers have to respect the wide receivers. And then they just have quick hitting plays of these running backs that are elite athletes. And all the offensive line is really being asked to do is just latch onto their guy for a few seconds. And there's some stud tailback who's going to break arm tackles and get five or six yards every time. It's not that complicated. The calls don't have to be that difficult because the defense is so spread out that it's pretty simple. It's straight ahead. It's five guys blocking five guys and a running back beating a safety somewhere. You know, this offense is much different. You're loading up the box. you got two tight ends in there the majority of the time, and that draws people into the box, which is an interesting uh, uh, way to run the ball if you really believe in yourself and, and you can do a good job with it, which they can. It's It's been really fun to watch. I mean, I haven't seen many missed assignments Guys are, are blowing guys off the ball. The technique is sound. The running backs are in coordination with the line and the tight ends knowing, hey, wait for this, wait for this, boom, there's the seam. Um, you know, through three games, it's been really fun to watch and, uh, you know, it makes you proud as a former offensive lineman to see the big guys up front uh, really taking this season on their shoulders and delivering so far. Uh, the point you just raised is, is one I think – is important to emphasize because the belief long being that, Hey, you, you don't run into a loaded box. You just don't. I mean, that's, that's not smart football. You can do it. If yeah. you have guys that can execute right consistently at a high level and are, and, and that are physical that can really move people. Michigan has both right now up through three games. They have both. Yeah. And, you know, you got to give a shout out to the tight ends, all shoemaker guys like that. It's not just the offensive line that's doing this. It's guys like that, that, you know, some of the clips that we might see uh, later on, you know, guys are caving down the, the defensive ends five, six yards. And when you're running counters and any sort of power scheme, really, and the, you know, the point of attack, it's caved down all that way. There's plenty of room for anybody else to mess up their block or for one of the you know running backs to find a seam in there. So, you know, everyone's done a really good job with it, uh, you know, beyond the fact that they physically can get it done. You know, it's the mental part of it, too, that's probably as every bit of impressive is there's not missed assignments out there. Those guys know where they're going. And, um, you know, the, the whole thing is in coordination. It's like watching a synchronized dance. They're doing a pretty good job with it. So one of the things that I've noticed about 
Josh Gaddis over the last, you know, since he's been the offensive coordinator is that, you know, it, it's, you can see um, like a different run be featured game. It's not like they just, hey, we're a team and we run, we run gap scheme stuff really, really well. We run powers and counters really, really well. Or, right. you know what? Split zone. We are, we are going to bludgeon teams to death with that. Or pin and pulls. Right. We can. That is our bread and butter. We're going to, you know, bludgeon teams with that. You see different things emerge versus different opponents as maybe a bread and butter play. First game, it was split zone. Second game, it was it was counters. Little mixture in this game. But this was the first time that we really saw them feature their their pin and pull game. And it was really effective, Jack. So I want you to sort of start there. Because it gives us another opportunity. We're going to talk about Andrew Vistardis in a couple of these clips, man. I I think about you when I watch him play because you as a former center, man, you got to look at that guy like, hell yeah, man. You're, yeah. you're out there balling. Yeah. No, he is. He's, he's doing a good job. Again, the physical part of it, watching these guys execute down blocks and then execute pulling around, fighting, you know, square, kicking out defensive ends. The next guy squares up on the linebacker. That's really impressive. Um, they can physically do it. What's even more impressive so so early in the season is that you have had three different defenses with different looks that are, uh, especially with Washington, that was trying to confuse the offensive line, and it hasn't worked, right? They've known exactly, hey, you know what, it's your turn to pull, it's your turn to pin, right? Then the next front, there's a different look, somebody else is going to pull, right? I mean, I think in one of the clips maybe we'll look at, you get the center and and the strong side guard pulling. That's that's really rare that you would have two guys right next to each other that go and everybody else is pinning down. So they're communicating really well. They got a good feel for what's working and they understand one another and and they're getting the calls across, which is awesome to see. All right. So this is looking at the uh, at the at the time marker for those who want to follow along with this first quarter, twelve thirty two. Uh, and and Michigan is at about looks like at about the 33 yard line, uh, you know, heading at 33 yard line of Northern Illinois. And Jack, you can sort of take it take it away. This is a pin and pull with some fly action. Uh, this is uh, Haskins, Hassan Haskins, might have been his first chunk run of the day. Yeah, they line up Haskins. Uh... Oh, we're going this way. I'm sorry. I thought that was the reverse. So. Yeah, they fake, they fake the jet sweep to the field side. The boundary side wide receiver comes in to draw the linebackers over a little bit. They fake to him. Haskins gets the ball. You see, it's just perfect execution. I think I think this is the one where it's all a shoemaker at tight end that really makes this play. He's sitting on the on the near side tight end spot. And him him in the left, I believe it's the left tackle. Look at how far down he caves him. He's past the hash mark there. Anytime you can get at the point of attack that much displacement, you got a good shot. Then you got big Vistardis pulling around, getting up onto the linebacker. I believe that's Viala at left guard kicking out. It's just really well executed. And you know what? The other thing, too, that, that I've noticed, Sam, is Coach Gaddis and the staff, three weeks in a row now, have put in an incredible play uh, call and scheme, I should say, on what they want to run. They got these guys out leveraged the majority of the game. They're not running into bad looks. And I don't know if that's they trust Kate enough where they're checking out of things. I doubt at this point in the season they're doing things like that too much. But every time they line up, you feel like they got a chance just right off the get-go. They got guys out leveraged. And then when you execute blocks like that, it's hard to beat. Yeah, and so you you pointed out the two, the two pins on the pin and pull were very physical blocks. Yeah. Schumacher and Ryan Hayes, they have to pin those guys so the pullers can get around. And look, there's right? no pen. And, and, and so, there's... you know, I mean, it's it's one thing for, uh, as you as you watch the guys come around, right? As you watch, um, who's that? That's Trevor Keegan. Yeah. So he comes around and he gets the outside linebacker, right? But your guy, Andrew Vistardis, has to get on his horse, man. He, he has to snap the ball. He has to get on his horse and get around to get that linebacker, and he was able to do it. Well, and a couple of things to note, too. He's following Keegan. He doesn't know where Keegan's guy is going to go. So he's got to be light on his feet. If that guy stays outside and, and wrong arms it like he does, and Keegan's content just to kick him out as far as possible, widen them, get as much space as possible for the, the starters to get up there. 
but you never know what the defense is. And so sometimes they'll spill it. They'll come inside of that. And then the big fella's got to be quick enough, light enough on his feet where he can get around that and then run out to his guy. And the play just ends up going more outside. So it's a, it's a fantastic job by both of them. Like you said, uh, all in haze on the down blocks there on the pins. The most impressive part is they don't give up any penetration, right? Not only do they wash them down the line of scrimmage, they don't let them into the backfield. If you let those guys into the backfield, it throws off the timing of everything because those guys pulling around get knocked off. The linebackers are able to fly over a bit quicker. And then by the time the running back's at the hole, there's nowhere to go. There's too much disruption. It's just really well done at the point of attack by all the guys, all the guys pinning down and the two pulling around. So now we're going to do one that is even more impressive by, by the starters. The starters on the reverse, which really is this a reverse? Right yeah. Now. Okay. All right. He, he, he man, Jack, could you really like this, man? Could you really now, like hold this, on. Jack? Hold on. Here's here's the thing that the, that many people might not get. This as impressive as impressive as this play is from the starters, and we'll watch it from uh, start to end. It is his guy who makes the play. So Come on, Jack. no, listen, listen, <laughs> listen, listen, Sam. I'm okay, telling you maybe, right now. Maybe Jack Miller can can run down a block of safety, but he got a piece of him, man. Listen, he got a piece of him. If I was grinning this as an offensive line coach, I'd give him the thumbs up. But I'm telling you how it works. Sitting in film the next day, you're graded on did your guy make the play? And it did. And even though he looks unbelievably athletic. And he springs a block, you know, that allows his play to go for 20, 25 yards, whatever it is, maybe more. His guy makes the play. I'm just saying. <laughs> I'm just saying. That's tough coaching right there. Here he is at the third level of defense. And he has to redirect. You guys will see. And for those of you who are listening, <laughs> watch the video because we we have some, some kinks ironed out. We're actually going to post the video today so you can watch it and you watch Andrew Vistardis redirect on this play. Sam, will you will you tweet this? It. Will you tweet this and give me some love today? I got you. I'm all, right. all over it, man. I'm all <laughs> over it. All right. So here we go. All right. Yeah. So they're at the near side boundary as we're watching it. Pistol formation. It just looks like it's going to be an inside zone, maybe outside zone. That skipped over there. It's hard to tell what happened with it. Okay. We'll go back. Sorry. Yep. There we go. Yeah, it just looks like it's going to be outside zone. Then they reverse it around the edge. And if you watch the offensive line, they basically try to start selling it. Um, it looks a lot like play action. It looks like boot action, right? They're just trying to run everybody to the left as fast as they can and convince those linebackers and defensive ends to run down, run down, run down. Then the start is you see what he does here. He's running. He gets past his man. And then on, on a dime like a running back, puts his foot in the ground and redirects immediately down the line to the right side in order to get out in front of the ball carrier. He's chasing, he's chasing, he's running, he's running with that. That's the far side safety. Okay. If you see on the film here, he's the guy who comes down. He's the only guy who recognizes it for what it is probably because he might've had him in man coverage. And so he comes running down all the way. The Stardust gets out down the line of scrimmage, takes a great angle, you know, a big center running with a free safety. Who's supposed to win that fight, right? He gets out leveraged just a little bit. He gets a push on him, and it's just plenty for the ball carry to get around. I don't know what we got here, 15, 20 yards. But had he cut him originally, one more time, if you see that when he first makes contact, I don't know, they might have changed that rule. You might not be allowed to cut downfield like that anymore. But right there, he should have taken him down. And if he does that, it might be a touchdown. That might be off the races. Yeah, I don't I don't know that you can do that, Jack. I, I, don't, <laughs> I don't think know you, that you can cut guys down the field like that, but maybe you can. I tell, maybe you, you can. You could, I, you could you could eight, nine years, eight, seven, eight years ago. I know that. Yeah, but that that's a hell of an athletic play. It is. I don't know. It, that's like a that's like asking a lineman, you know, to to run a route right there. No, it's Get and you know what the, the fun and explode out of the break. That's what the fun Andrew part is do right there. I guarantee they practiced that a few times uh, last week in practice, right? And so that was one of those calls when they knew they were going to go to it. That I guarantee his eyes lit up and said, "Oh, this is this is the fun one, right?" I mean, it's just something different. Instead of having to, you know, go downhill and bang your head all day, you get to go out and run and try to be an athlete for a little bit, which he obviously is. It was a great play on the starters. All right, and so you have so many talented guys running the football. That was A.J. Henning right there, who's a receiver yep. who has made big plays on the ground. We showed the first play with Hassan Haskins, all playing at a very high level. And then, of course, Blake Horm, who is just, I mean, he's their leading rusher, their, uh, you know, their biggest big play threat so far. 
And he's been taking advantage of great blocking, but there are sometimes, Jack, he's going so well. And we showed a play last week where he <laughs> he got in front of one of his pullers on a counter and still made a big play, right? Yeah. There's yeah. sometimes where the play in front of him goes wrong and he makes it right anyway. Yeah. Uh, and this is one of those we, watching this, it's like this. I think this was a bust up front. I don't think they were supposed to that they were supposed to leave this, uh, you know, this uh, this in unblocked the way they did. But Blake Corum made him right. So you can you can talk us through that. He made him right in a big way, by the way, as you talk us through this one, Jack. He pulled well, without up. without even watching this one yet, it's been impressive to see from all these backs. You're, you're right. They make the offensive line right a lot of times. And, you know, the good news is with this offensive line, from what I've seen, when it's a bad play, it's really not that bad. There's no, there's not massive disruption. There's not guys running around the backfield. There's not chaos. There's always enough time, generally speaking, for these running backs to get their ball on their track and figure out where they're supposed to go from there. So, you know, it, it's just, it's just another credit, I think, to the O line and to the running backs in sync with one another that even when it's bad, it's busted, they threw a look, there was a miscommunication, whatever. It's never that bad where it doesn't give you a chance to at least fall forward. I mean, I'd be, I be—I don't know the stats, but I'd be really interested to see how many tackles for loss they've taken this year, if any, because it always seems like eh, it didn't really work, but, okay, he got to the line of scrimmage and fell forward for a few yards, right? And if you can do that and negate those negative plays, you know, you're always putting yourself in a chance to, to convert first downs. Yeah, so not – not many uh, missed assignments, but I counted this as one, and you, you're you the expert on it, Jack, so you can tell me if they were supposed to leave this eight on block like this. I can't imagine they were, but Blake Quorum still makes a huge play. Oh, I'm is this where they, they leave the DN on block? Yep. Yeah. I, you know, I thought the same thing. I uh, The way it works out is is pretty darn good, right? Uh, the tight, they, They're in the near side of the field. The tight end releases up to the safety, the only overhang there. They leave the defensive end on that side, and uh, and Hayes just immediately goes up to seal off the weak side linebacker. So you got both of those guys blocked. He uh, is this Corum here? Yeah, Corum yeah. outruns the safety in the middle of the field, and you just leave the front side DN unblocked. I, I don't know if this is this. I think it might be honestly as quick as that action is. Now I don't think you're going to be able to pull this off against better defensive lines, right? Guys who have closing speed in the near in the near side of the field like that will, will probably catch anybody trying to outrun them like that. This defensive end slips, but it works. It works. Well, JJ, and JJ doesn't look like he's reading him though. I mean, if you're going to leave him unblocked, you you read him right. You would think. I mean, let let's let's take a look at the action one more time in the backfield. Yeah, I I don't know. I but the, the interesting part is if it is a busted play, it doesn't look like it because that double team. With, the, with Hayes and the left guard there, they look like they know they're double teaming the hip up to the backer. That looks like they know that. And mm -hmm. if that's all our schoonmaker, I can't tell in the film here, who blows the uh, the strong safety out of the box there and into the, uh, into the sidelines, he looks pretty convinced of what he's supposed to do. So I, may, maybe it is, or uh, this is a little optimist speaking here, but they knew we got enough speed right there. We can outrun that guy. And that and that was just a that was a intentional call to say leave him, and uh, I you know you know I, what I'll I, ask either way it works. Yeah, you know what I'm gonna ask that. Uh, I'll 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 ask the powers that be. Hey man, did you guys mean to leave that defensive end uh, blocked right there? Yeah. And say hey Blake, do what you do, <laughs> which they may have done. They may yeah. Have done. I mean as as speedy as he is, right? Um, you know maybe they thought they had a mismatch. That's what good teams do is they figure out where in their opponents uh, they have weaknesses and they try to exploit it. And if that's what they did there, then kudos to them because uh, it worked out. All right. So we will get to a break. We'll come back on the other side. We will talk about defense. And like I said, Sands won one series where, you know, you, they got a little movement. Northern Illinois did up front. They uh, got Michigan uh, in some bad run fits, maybe, uh, you know, late getting the line, that kind of thing, caught him out of position. Uh, but then Michigan stiffened in the red zone, held him to a field goal, and it was downhill from Northern Illinois from that point on. Between the lines with Jack Miller, 
brought to you by Highland. Before Jack tells us about Highland, I, I'm guessing, Ira, that they must have had some tackle eligible play where they brought in the backup center and put Jack out there as the extra lineman and had him run around. They must have because, I mean, that was starters play. I'm like, man, that's a pretty good play. Jack's ah, it's pretty good. It, it's okay. He, it was a great play. He could have. It was him. a great play. I'm he just saying. He, up, Sam. he said he gave him a great up, a thumbs up. Come on, that's a Jack great play. I passes. just, I just made the observation. If you watch the tape closely, that it happened to be the guy he was blocking that made the play. It's just you know. For those I'm who don't, Jack was a two-way it standout. It was um, was it St. John's in Toledo? Was it Toledo yeah. St. John's? Yep. See, yeah. see, I remember these things, Jack. Yeah, whatever these things. I so, know. Despite his advanced age, <laughs> despite my advanced age. Yeah. But Jack is on here with Between the Lines, brought to you by Highland. Jack, tell the folks about Highland. Yeah, Highland's uh, insurance broker doing uh, business insurance, property casualty, and employee benefits, personal lines, uh, family-owned business. One of the largest uh, privately held insurance brokers in the nation, based out of Toledo, Ohio, all throughout uh, the Midwest, down into the South. Uh, been around for 85 years. Uh, I'm, I'm very lucky to work there. And um, I think our clients would say they're lucky and enjoy working with us as well. So any insurance needs out there, feel free to reach out to Highland, highland.com, H-Y-L-A-N-T. Any insurance needs, uh, love to help the Michigan faithful with. Thanks. All right. So if we look back, the first play in the Washington game, right? First play in the Washington game. Great. Penetration by the defensive line. Great fills by the uh, by the linebacker, specifically one Mr. Josh Ross. You look at the first play of this game, yeah. deja vu all over again, Jack, as I'll bring this up on the screen for you. Yep. So you can break it down. But this is this is how it's supposed to look, my friend. Uh as the as the Michigan defense, the the box, the front seven. Really playing in unison, defensive line doing its job and allowing those linebackers. Yeah, you play. So here we go. You yeah. said it. Besides that second series, I thought the defense played played excellent. Uh, their fits looked good. Everybody looked comfortable. You see here, kind of a unique front, right? They got three down linemen. You got Aiden out there, stand up. Kind of a different front. Everybody holds their waters in their gap sound, which again allows Josh Ross to do what he's done all year so far, which is just find that ball carrier, right? He fits his gap perfectly. Nobody can block him. The double teams miss, sticks him in the hole, TFL to start the game. What a, what a good feeling two weeks in a row, Josh Ross being exactly where he should be. Shuffle, shuffle, boom, greet him in the hole, end of play. See, but his guys in front of him, uh, they they don't get the glory, but, you know, the – they make the play. They allow him to make right. that play. They allow look, him to look, flow to that and play. And you can Keeping see right clean. Exactly. You and, can see right and, there. Yeah, as you see right here, Jack, as I'll run it back for you one more time. Thanks. Yeah, they're nobody's giving up any any penetration. They're not allowing these guys to slip off, get to the second level. It's just supposed to be a split zone. Um, but when no double teams get up to the linebackers and you don't move the defensive line. I don't care what you're trying to run. You're not going to have any success with it. So great play to start the game. Way to uh, you know, get off to a fast start, set the tempo early. Yeah, important for your linebackers to trigger, to read their keys. Don't wait and catch blocks. I no. used to hear a coach, don't catch blocks. Be aggressive. Read your keys. Be aggressive. And that was a key for, for, uh, for Josh Ross on that play. We'll see Junior Colson uh, do the same thing later in the uh later in the quarter as they as northern was making that that drive that was held to a field goal he made a a big play there but let's go to that drive because mm -hmm. if you're if you talk about the defense and and maybe the only time during the day that they had some issues it was that second drive for northern illinois little movement up front for the uh husky offensive line uh, some some bad fits at times, bad fits by the linebackers. Uh, there was one time where the safety had a bad fit. You had uh, one of your edge guys get, you know, poor assignment football. He went straight for the dive and let the quarterback get around him. There were a lot of plays like that in that series. Uh, but one of them that they got him on twice in that series, Jack, that I want you to talk us through 
was when they uh, when they traded their tight ends. They, you know, the tight end movement shifting the strength yeah. of the formation, and it, as Michigan got moved around to react to that, you you sort of saw them get caught out of position a little bit. So I want you to talk us through this. Well, it all uh, it all it starts screen for you. It all yeah, starts with alignment. Now. Okay, and and if you don't get a line we'll properly, be able to follow this on our YouTube page a little bit later, and I'll start this playback from the beginning. Jack, take it away. So yeah, it all it all starts with alignment, and if you don't get aligned the right way, everything else from there, you know, you're 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 pushing uphill to get done the right way. So when they trade the tight ends like that, you can see that Michigan's in a certain defense that's based on the strength of the tight ends. So not only do they want to shuffle the defensive line down, you'll see at the beginning of the clip here. They actually move everybody before that. They switch sides, and then they're not aligned properly in the right gas. So, you know, you're, you're paddling, you know, you're, you're paddling uphill already because no, everyone's already confused, right? And wait, who's see see how they flip like this? They move the defensive tackle actually runs to the overside, the other side. The defensive ends flip, so it's just confusing, right? You can see the safeties. You see Dax Hill yelling about coverages. You can see the linebackers not sure where they're supposed to fit as the D line's moving before the snap. So when, when you don't have good communication right off the bat, it's hard to execute when everyone's half half unsure of what they're supposed to be doing to begin with, right? So give NIU credit, right? They, they for whatever reason in this drive, kind of had Michigan's number and knew the defenses that they were in or that they wanted to be in and put in a couple plays there to confuse Michigan, and, and it worked. They got down the field. Now they bowed up in the, in the red zone and held them to a field goal, thankfully, but it's just a good play. It's just a really good scheme from NIU. They saw what Michigan was doing in that first drive and in that three and out. And then they had some answers to it in the second drive. It's, it's actually good coaching. Yeah. And so you saw Northern Illinois hit Michigan with that same, uh, you know, shift pre-snap uh, and got them for another play, but you didn't really see them hit them after, <laughs> after that series. Yeah. If there were, if it was communication or just, being assignment sound, a combination of the two, Michigan got it together very, very quickly. Uh, yeah, and, and that and, was the only time they really had success against the first and, or second stringers all day long. But I really want to – so I talked about linebackers triggering and not waiting to catch blocks when your defensive line is doing its job. Because if the linebacker just sit there, sits there and hesitant, I mean, hey, man, eventually – yeah, uh, these are human beings. They're only going to hold that that double team up for so long. Uh, you 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 hold it, and that linebacker better be. He better fill and get to where he wants to be. And you had a freshman and junior Colson do this in a big moment on that drive, Jack. So I'll bring this up now and have you talk us through it because I was like, this young fella, that's going to get you some some kudos in the meeting room. I am sure because this was key in helping them hold them to a field uh, to a field goal on that drive. So I'm bringing it up for you now, Jack. Let me share the screen for you here. And boom, here we go. All right, take it away, Jack. All right. Yeah, so they're on the near side of the field here, second and 10. Playbook's open. They're on the 11-yard line trying to get in. They just run a, a inside zone here to the short side of the field. They think they got numbers here. They think they got them out leveraged. What you'll see, you see the defensive line does such a good job. It's just, yeah, it's just inside zone. No, no movement, no displacement. That allows, who is that there? I can't, who is the Number linebacker? Number 25 is Junior Colson. So yeah. the, the, the three tech on the play, I believe is Chris Hinton. Yep, so that's he takes Chris on Hinton. double team. Uh, and and, he, and that that center, the center is the one that's trying to work his way up to Junior Colson. Correct. And the guard, Chris Hinton, just blows that guard a yard back. So by the time the center is over there, he's got to completely turn his body to get any sort of push on Hinton. By the time he does that, the linebacker knows what's going on and is able to fill downhill. By the time the center wants to turn back around to square up on the linebacker, the running back's already in the gap. There's too much confusion. He hits them. It doesn't go anywhere. That's the difference. You see, you talk about that with defensive linemen all the time, especially in, in this type of defense, going downhill, getting your hands in the opponent's chest and getting them back a yard. When you do that, all the timing on double teams gets messed up. Even if a guy can get off and get up to the backer, it's never a clean hit. It's never a clean block. This is just good instinctive football from the linebackers here to get downhill and a really good job from hitting 
to blow that guard back. It puts the center in a bind. He can't really help now to block Hinton. He can't really help to get up on the second level to help with the linebacker. So you're kind of in no man's land. And if you come downhill, fill that gap like they do here, there's nowhere to go. Yeah. Yeah, just a very, very uh, good play by Hinton. Again, doesn't get credit for the tackle, but he was huge on that play. And then a young freshman, Junior Colson. I mean, you talk about size, athleticism. He has it coming in the door. Uh, one of the things that George Hilo said, the linebacker coach, we just got to teach him where to go. You know, he's, he has got to find his way to the bathroom right now, he said back in the summer. Well, he's finding his way to the yeah. ball carrier on the football field here yeah. early in this season a little more as uh, each game, as, as we get deeper into the, uh, you know, into the schedule here. So Jack, now big 10 play starts to, yep. to sort of break this down. Just your, your thoughts on what Michigan did in the non-conference relative to your expectations. And, you know, as you look at big 10 play, how you see Michigan fitting into this race where you maybe got some teams looking a little more vulnerable than we thought. And then you right. got some teams looking stronger than we thought, like Iowa and Michigan State. Yeah. No, I think you're right. Um, from an expectation standpoint, it's been great to see what they've done this far um, in, in what, you know, what you would call preseason, not Big Ten play. Um, exceeded expectations. Um, I think the defense is playing really, really well. I think Coach McDonald um, seems to be a bit of a defensive savant and has answers for everything. And um, those guys look like um, – they have a good game plan every game and they're playing their butts off. They're playing hard. They're fast. Maybe what they might lack in physicality is getting made up for in scheme and effort and speed. And I really like where the defense is. Uh, they just got to continue to bring that energy and that mojo every game and, and fly around the way they are from an offensive perspective. It's awesome to see Michigan running the ball that effectively um, guys are on the same page. Guys are good. They're executing well. Uh, the rhythm is there. You know, everyone last week with, can we throw the ball? Can we throw the ball? Well, what a good problem to have that you don't have to worry about that until week four or then on in the season, right? Where you can just allow more time uh, to develop those routes, to understand the timing. That's a, that's a, that's a blessing. Um, and, and certainly we will have to throw the ball against better teams to win games down the stretch. But I like where the team's at. I think there's a lot of mojo right now. I think they're, they're playing confident. Uh, I think they've got good game plans going into the game. They know what they're doing. You know, Coach Harbaugh last week talking about, you know, George Patton on the ground and Neil Armstrong in the air. Like, that's that's old school Jim Harbaugh, right? That's He's got a little bit of his mojo back, right? There just seems to be – I think these young assistant coaches got these guys confident and playing hard and believing in each other. Um, you know, it's hard to win, and they're winning, and they're winning convincingly. You know, certainly we're going to see better opponents throughout the year. Um, but that's what good teams do. They keep getting better. They keep building on their successes and fine tuning the things that they need to get better at. It seems as though they're doing that. And, um, you know, you just hope that when, adver when adversity strikes and it will, that this team's got enough in them, uh, to respond and, and to continue what started out to be a really good year for them. So, you know, too early to make any predictions and all that kind of stuff, big 10. And I think college football in general is shaping out this year a little differently than most people thought. Or anticipated, and I think you see the the um, reaction of a post COVID world with a bunch of you know these are kids; they're eighteen to twenty one year olds, and life was a lot different for eighteen months. And you, I think you're seeing that play out on a football field too. That there's just a lot of unpredictability right now. But I, I really do like where Michigan's at. I, I think they're playing a good brand of football, and uh, you know if they keep getting better week in and week out, they're going to give themselves a chance down the stretch. Great, great stuff. Great analysis insight into the trenches between the lines with Jack Miller on a weekly basis. We will get the video up a little bit later on today so you can watch those clips. Uh, and, and maybe we're going to try to, we're going to try to dig up. Maybe, maybe just maybe <laughs> Ira, because we know the film guy down there. We know Phil Bromley. Maybe he has some old film of Jack <laughs> running some patterns. Maybe I'm just, I, just saying you any tape like that exists jack there was there was a down the field block one time i think it was the opener in 14 against appalachian state some reverse thing like that there's a big block downfield you should you should see bromley can pull that up for you there's something very similar to that where the guy doesn't make the play i know that 
Okay, I got you. <laughs> Jack, before you go, tell the folks about Highland one more time. Yeah, Highland, uh, full service insurance broker, uh, family owned, privately held, Midwest based, been around 85 years, uh, business insurance, property casualty, employee benefits, personal lines. Um, but if there are any insurance needs out there, Highland uh, represents the University of Michigan as one of our clients and uh, and would love to uh, to work with any anyone listening out there. If you need insurance help, Highland.com, H-Y-L-A-N-T.com. Love that be of assistance. 